Game Ranks presents 10 things Batman Arkham players hate. Oh, and by the way, of course, we're making this video because we love the Arkham games so much. It's just fun to nitpick at some of the complaints and the things that us players, these hardcore fans of these series, the things that really bother us. Now, just be warned, we're going to talk about major spoilers for all the main Arkham games here. So let's get into it, starting off with number 10. Let's talk about that remote control Batarang. Throughout all the games, they just, they're so annoying. I hate them. Not only does the game require you to steer them through convoluted elements to solve puzzles, the controls are just god awful and make it impossible. Not to mention the fact that they automatically come inverted, which is a big problem for some people, including myself. I just know that in any Arkham game, whenever I have to steer a Batarang through like a chain link fence and spin it around a hallway, I groan because it's the worst thing ever. And at number 9, we have those chatty criminals. Whether you're flying around Arkham Asylum, or Arkham City, or Gotham City, these criminals just never shut the hell up. And you spend so much time in these game worlds flying around the city and exploring that you hear what everybody has to say multiple times, and it gets really old. Especially when all the criminals are done by one or two voice actors. Halfway through the main story, I've heard what every criminal has to say at least 10 times, so shut the fuck up. Also, you shouldn't be yelling and shouting about Batman unless you want Batman to fly down and kick you in the ass. Looks like he's going. And at number eight, here's one that's up for debate, but it's definitely worth talking about. The Joker in everything. It always comes down to the Joker. I think the biggest offense for this is probably Arkham Origins because I mean, come on, you play the whole game and then it turns out the Black Mask was really the Joker behind everything? Are you serious? And then not to mention when you pop in Arkham Knight and you think you're finally rid of the Joker, the Joker is gone. Nope. Turns out the entire game is more or less a little bit focused around the Joker. Granted the story beats behind it, and his duality with Batman were totally awesome, but still, just always the Joker. The Joker is of course Batman's greatest villain of all time, but Batman has so many other great villains that could be the entire headline of an entire game story. So maybe we should get that. Please, maybe once? And at number 7, the Arkham series handles a lot of famous Batman characters very well, but there are some wasted characters in there. You know, there are some fan favorite characters in there that have been brushed off and could have been explored a little bit more. Perfect example is Robin. In Arkham City, he shows up for a second and then goes, okay, see you later. And they spent so much time on his character design and he seemed like such an exciting addition to the game, and then you never see him again. Not to mention that lame Lady Shiva fight in Arkham Origins. That could have been such an awesome counterfilled encounter and then it turned out to be just kind of lame. And now don't get me started about Deathstroke because, okay, Death Deathstroke had his moment in Arkham Origins, whatever, but by the time he did come around at the end of Arkham Knight, it was a totally wasted cameo. So while the Arkham series does handle Batman villains and characters very well, there are a couple that could have been more taken advantage of. Now, number six is a little bit of a 50-50. It depends on what kind of player you are, if you're a completionist or not. The tedium of the Riddler trophies drives some fans of these games absolutely nuts because they're absolutely everywhere and only half of the player base, I think, really wants to bother with finding all of them. I don't know how you guys play these games, but I'll stumble across one on a rooftop. I'll try for two seconds, say fuck this and move on and never look at it again. Not to mention the fact that by Arkham Knight, they are absolutely everywhere. So you better like them because you're going to see a lot of them in Arkham Knight. Do you love or hate collecting Riddler trophies? Let us know in the comments. And at number five, one thing that I know all players of Arkham hate, you're in a fight, you're doing amazing, you got a crazy combo, you're breaking people's legs, flipping over guys, taking everybody out, and then suddenly some guy comes off camera and punches you in the ass and ruins your whole combo. You've been there, I know you have, and don't just tell me, oh, because you suck, get good. No, everybody's had this happen at least once. You get an amazing combo streak, and it's ruined. But I think that just goes to show how satisfying the Batman Arkham combat really is, because you get such a high streak, you feel so good, and then it gets ruined, and your heart is broken. And at number four, here's something that a lot of players don't like. Let's talk about the lack of a real bat cave in these games. Now, save for Arkham Origins that did have the actual bat cave, none of the games really got the whole bat cave vibe right. Now, it makes sense in the story because Batman is stuck in a place where he has to do things and punch people, but the idea that he just has little cordoned off little sub bat caves hidden in places where he knows shit might go down, I'd almost rather them not have anything. A bat cave would be a really great home base where you could access your computer, look at all the villains you captured, maybe even view all your collectibles, and different outfits. The Batcave just has a lot of potential as a gameplay element, and we wish Rocksteady explored that just a little bit more. And at number three, here's something that breaks the immersion a little bit sometimes, being forced to slow walk during certain scenes. Now, of course, it does make sense, and it's nice to not run past the character that you're walking with, but it happens a lot in the later games, and it just kind of 
breaks things up a little too much. Especially in Arkham Knight when you're constantly bat skyping with everybody on your wrist every five seconds and you're forced to stop exploring the main game. They could have kept that to just really important moments and had the screen popped up on the top right corner of your screen as you're gliding around. But no, they decided to break up the flow of the game with these sequences. Sure, it might sound like I'm just nitpicking a little bit, but I don't know, it's annoying. And at number two, a lot of you guys are gonna feel me on this one, those Cobra tank battles. Oh my god. Now, I'm not the type of person that completely hate on the emphasis of the tank stuff in Arkham Knight, but the Cobra tank battles are where it does really go a little too far for me. Just because they feel a little bit tedious and kind of a pain in the ass. And anytime a Cobra tank battle popped up in the game, I was like, oh no, not this again. Not to mention, going back to before, the Deathstroke final battle was essentially just a Cobra tank battle. Damn it! Because I don't know about you guys, when I think of Batman, I don't think of him stealthing around, sneaking around other tanks in his own little tank to snipe. And at number one, the thing that Batman Arkham players hate the most, and I know this is an absolute certainty, the PC version of Arkham Knight. In what many of you guys probably remember as one of the most disastrous launches of a AAA game on PC ever, Arkham Knight released on June 23rd and was completely broken for 90% of PC players. The frame rate was locked at 30, the game crashed constantly, it was poorly optimized, it was basically unplayable for everyone. It was so bad to the point that on June 24th, Warner Brothers actually took the game off sale from Steam. They were issuing refunds for players left and right and there was no way to actually obtain a copy of the game on PC. Warner Brothers released patches here and there to try and fix the game, but ultimately the game wasn't really fixed until September 4th. The game went up on sale online October 28th once it was finally fully fixed. Even still, some players have complained about lingering technical issues and that totally sucks because Arkham Knight is a good game and it was really disappointing to be surrounded by so much crap. So these are the things that we think a lot of Arkham Knight players absolutely hate. Of course, like I said, we all love this game. We're just celebrating it and poking out the little things that annoy us. But we do want to hear from you players down in the comments. What gripes do you have about the Arkham series? What little things bother you the most? Let's talk about it. And if you did have a good time watching this video, click the like button. And subscribing is the best thing you can do because we put out videos like this every single day. But thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.